Hello, friends. I am very excited because I'm going to have an old friend on with me today who is also an incredible superstar. So I am very excited. I, I, I do struggle with the term old friend, though, I have to say, because it just implies that we're old and we're just not. We're just in the prime of our lives, all of us, but um, no matter where we are. But a friend from way back, Kristen Griffith Vanderyat is joining me today. Welcome. This is Heart Home Harmony Live. Live interviews. Um, I really even hesitate to call them interviews. They're chats with incredible people, mostly creatives. But if they're not creatives, they're people. They're people for sure. But they're people who have a creative spirit. And honestly, I think everyone does. I think it's vital to everyone. So we'll always tap into that. But most people are creatives. Certainly that's the case of Kristen Griffith Vanderyat, who is joining us very shortly. Um, assuming all goes well, we, we're not able to practice, which is um, usually something I like to do. Um, <laughs> but we couldn't get that done, but we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, so Heart Home Harmony Live, welcome. Uh, I'm Noelle Gatz. I am your host here. I'm a TV host. I'm an interior designer up here in the New York City area. Um, technically live in northern New Jersey, which I love. I'm a transplant here, originally from Virginia. I was actually born in New York City, moved to Virginia. My life has been a little cuckoo. Um, more about that another day. But for now, I really want to invite Kristen to join us. So hopefully, he's close at hand. Hope you guys are all well today. Let's see. Oh, the vibrato is not what it used to be. <laughs> Girl, me too. Really? I was okay. I have to start with this. So, hi, Kristen. Hi. Hi. This is Kristen. Hello. But I have to start with. So we met during our singing, acting, um, dancing days. I don't know. I really uh, was. You were doing it all, sister. Oh, I was you, mediocre at best at the dancing. You, you were. I'm just fixing this camera. Oh yes. lord. Very oh my god. You're gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, literally just got my children was, out of the house. I was going to say. I was going to school. I was like, bye, guys. I'm going on camera. I'm, Get yeah. out. This is why I love this, because it's so casual. Yeah. It's like not at all meant to be like stuffy. We have kids. We have lives. You're, you're, where are you right now? Where do you live yeah. right now? Seattle. So I'm three hours behind you. So you're, yeah, West so Pacific time. Yes. The so Pacific I, I, just in my head, you live in L.A. because. You're so fabulous, and I just assume you live there. I can't take that traffic. Although the traffic here is terrible. Is it too. really? Oh my god! Seattle is like a dreamy place to me. Like I kind of feel like I should live there sometime. But it is absolutely beautiful, stunning, gorgeous in the <laughs> summer. <laughs> summer. <laughs> and you got the flower market. Don't you have like a famous flower market there? I don't know. Is it famous? It we have. Up. We have a amazing flower market here called the Seattle Wholesale Growers Market, where mm -hmm. you get some of the most dreamy product that you'll say. ever get. Well, there. people don't know people know you because they just know you because you're super famous, um, <laughs> super fabulous. But you are now a floral designer. Yes, is that what we call it? That's the appropriate term, correct? Yeah, I would call it a floral designer. Yeah. yeah. Thing, yeah. because it's yeah. not a florist anymore that's somebody who owns the shop and does things in their shop and that's yeah fine yeah um, i don't know like i think that i think that it's all honestly i think that you and i are sort of actually in the same world yes because we're taking elements yeah we're taking elements and we're helping people to shape and make their spaces yes right and so i'm a designer I'm a floral designer, but really, I think that what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help people live yes. better lives. Yes. You know? Oh, my God, so, we're the same. <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah, the same so, for the past 25 years I, in my life. No, well, I know. it's Well, that's what happens. We just, like, go and... Yes, you go where the wind takes but also, you. What had just children really young? Superman? You have children now. I know. But um, I had you have you have littles now. So how old are your littles right now? Oh God, six, six, and two. Oh my God, 
so it's the six-year-old in kindergarten and just turned six okay. yes he just That's turned a six year. he just turned six um in january oh my gosh yeah congrats on all that i mean of all the other successes and all the beautiful things um it must feel just so incredible and complete to have have that family sometimes <laughs> But you know that overall, your legacy is more, your legacy is so much more, even than yeah. just all these wonderful things it's, you're doing. It's so, you know, look, I think that when you have children in an attention-based society that mm -hmm. we live in, mm -hmm. where people have access to you all the time, and you also have access to the entire world on a little, you know, <laughs> device, a little five, <laughs> five device. Yep you really have to work on focusing and really honing in and prioritizing what is important to you. And that only happens through trial and, and error. error. <laughs> and as parents, we already have a lot of error. Yeah. And so what I've just been trying to work on is just being kinder to myself and have more grace with myself. Yeah. Because I care so much and I'm such an involved parent yes. that if I'm ever having to go do a project, I'm like, but I'm missing pajama I day. Oh, and you're like, <laughs> I relate to this a thousand percent. It's you actually know? Part of the reason. I'm actually struggling the other way. So this is the question I had for you too, was this, that okay. like, how do you find that balance when you're traveling? You have this young family, you've got, <laughs> you've got to, I mean, you love it. You've got to, but you're like me, I can tell where you're like, but yeah. it's, but am I being a bad parent because I'm not there? Yes. No, you're honest to God not. As somebody who kind of gave up everything for a while yeah. and kind of wishes they had it. Yeah. I can tell yeah. you, there's yeah. so much beauty in both of it. And again, the trial and error. I'm not, I'm forgiving myself. Yeah. I'm giving myself a lot of grace. Yes. But I gave up many years, many yes. years. Yeah. Yes. 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 I, I feel... couldn't do anything else. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel that way. I feel like I really stepped back when my second child came along. Where I was like, okay, he had a lot more needs. He was born early. Mm -hmm. Like, there was just a lot more, like, attention that needed to go into keeping him alive. Same and with so, my second one. <laughs> right. Right. That second one is like... Something. They're, something they're like, here, try this. <laughs> yeah. They're like, here, I'm a Tasmanian <laughs> devil. I'm just going to do what I want. <laughs> um, and they need that extra care. They, they really do. They really do. So I feel like for my second one, I was... I really allowed myself the space just to really focus on that and now i just feel like now that he's two he's going to be three in may i feel like now i'm well, sort of like waking up again well you're and I waking wrote a book. up with a bang yeah because like the book the awards <laughs> like i don't yeah. i don't I, I mean there's so much more to you and i want to talk about it all but this okay. is like okay i've known since you were with since we were friendly and friends and, yes. and, and on stage you were special you've always been special um, everyone is special, of course, but there's something special about you, the energy, the beauty, the genuine authenticity. What? The love. I'm, um, oh, I still to this day do that thing that you did. I, I, all of us do. I think we all remember this about you. Oh, I'm so nervous. Oh, oh the heartbeat. <laughs> yes, yes, I still do that. I still do that. Me too. I and I now call it to my you. children. I've now talked to my children. I will walk into a room and I'll go, oh, I'm so nervous. All those harmonies and steps. I'm so nervous. So for people, so for people who don't know, I'm a massive Dream Girls fan. I'm a massive, massive Dream Girls, the musical fan. And there's a fight scene right before they kick Effie out of the group where the new girl who's replacing yeah. Effie comes in and she's talking about how nervous she is. <laughs> And she's so scared, and that's when they find out, and all everything sort of like falls yeah. apart. But well, similarly, we would go on stage and everything would fall apart. Just kidding. No, we did a great job with the. We were given a lot, and we did it. We were given nothing, and that's we made everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I meant. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, we have so many stories, guys. I feel like we could do a whole deep dive into the backstage shenanigans of musical theater performers in their youth. Do you feel um, like? Sorry to interrupt. You. No, please. First of all, I just love that we're seeing each other, and I love that we're having this moment. But I, do you ever feel like all of the training that you've had as a performer and a dancer and a singer and a presenter has prepared you for 
the career that you have now? Yes, and that was my question for you as well. Oh. This is a great, we're just interviewing one another. I'm sorry. Just I'm, mutual love. I'm Absolutely, nosy. don't you? I mean, I, here's what I think. I always tell people, I think the biggest, the biggest thing, I mean, obviously vocal projection, knowing yeah. where your light is, yeah. all that stuff is great. There's also the improv factor, like being able to know that anything can happen and that right. you have to be ready and that you know how to listen to people and you know how right. to react to people. Yeah. Um, I think that's so important, right? That's telling a story. And that's what we both do, like you said, in our own ways. You are telling yeah. a story through not just this kind of design, because you're also incredibly fashionable. You sing, oh. you dance, you do all the things and you're an actor and you're a beautiful person. You create beautiful environments. But like for me too, who's creating someone's uh, interiors mostly i actually talk about it a lot in my sort of um my my point of view in design is character driven right. design which is very yeah. much um obviously from our theater background i mean don't yeah. you think yeah on tv especially when you were on the the great the big flower fight right big flower fight yeah which i have to ask you about that too because okay okay, reality okay. tv is such a thing i'm gonna I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to let you ask your questions because no, this, this whole love, conversation this, could go off don't the shut rails. Up. This is perfect, but I just feel like people want to hear about you, not about me. Oh, I right now. want to hear about you. Sorry, I'm very selfish and nosy. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, no, but the big flower fight, I obviously do reality TV as well. And I read something that you said somewhere that I really loved about it. And I'm really sorry how loud I am, everyone. Sorry. Um, you were talking about the fact that you love that this opportunity to to do reality TV, and you were hosting, and you were an expert, right? Was that you didn't have to manipulate people, you didn't have to create tension, or, you know, tension is naturally built in when there's some sort of competition or something going on. Yeah. But you weren't creating that, you were really there to support and inspire people, and I felt the same in my show, I was like, thank goodness yeah. I didn't get a show where I'm like supposed to pit people against each other, or like a lot of that stuff, it's just not for me, like Survivor yes. and whatever else. Yeah, when uh, it was really important to me, and I was very upfront with them yeah. in the audition process, which was yeah. this long. Same. My audition process was like, blink, okay, you're moving to London. Yes. Like it was, Ooh. which is the opposite of every single theatrical Broadway audition I've ever yeah. had, because Wait. they put you, they put you through the ringer, you're waiting weeks, mm -hmm. then they call you, then they say they want you to come back, you have to do it all over again, then you have to dance, <laughs> then you're waiting weeks, then they have you come back, then you're dancing and you're reading scenes and you learn, yeah. memorize 20 pages and you're reading with this person who doesn't know their lines, yeah. or you're reading with someone across the room, or you're reading with someone across the room who doesn't even care, who's giving you nothing yes. During the reading, you know, as and someone like, who was a reader, I was well known for being awesome because uh, I cared so much. I wish and I would have had you. I, I wish I would have had you because I, anyway, a bad yeah. reader can make a break your audition, right? And I knew it, yeah. and I took it very. Yeah, seriously. but anyway, you're right. You would so, wait weeks and weeks. So this was like, yeah. oh, I, I got it. Oh, you told me. This was me? so fast. They sent me a DM on Instagram, <laughs> and I was driving. Oh yeah, they sent me a DM on Instagram. I was driving my son to daycare and you know me being a, a thirsty actor that i am the car went <laughs> hold up kid Hold on, wait, 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 wait. no so then i just i i wrote them and i was like listen i'm driving my son to school i'll call you when yeah, i'm done say yeah. right and i was like either two things are going to happen mm -hmm. i'm getting scammed by a nigerian <laughs> prince or <laughs> or this is or legit this is <laughs> happening or i'm going to london real. And so I pulled into a Starbucks and stole their Wi-Fi. Didn't even go inside. I sat in my yeah. car, <laughs> logged on to their Wi-Fi, spoke to this woman for 10 minutes. She was amazing, lovely, warm. And in that phone call, one of the questions was, um, they actually were putting me on mm -hmm. tape during that like mm -hmm. video interview. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They said, what kind of judge would you be? And I was like, I'll tell you right now, I am not the Simon. Yes. I am not here to like tear people down. I am the Paula. Yeah. I am yeah. here to bring people up. I was like, people are dedicating their life's work to this moment. They are dedicating their life's energy, their creativity. They are giving parts of themselves that they're never going to get back. And my goal is not to like make them feel bad, mm -hmm. make them feel horrible. My goal is to make them better. Yes make them better right. and that's all i've really wanted to do f in my career yes. is for myself is mm -hmm. to be better mm -hmm. to be someone who 
I feel like I'm proud proud of to be someone yes. that my kids and the world and other people, especially little kids of color, can look up to. You know, because mm -hmm. I didn't have me mm -hmm. on the TV when I needed to see me on the TV. Absolutely, so that was really important for and me. You're you're doing it and you did it and you just speaking of people of color <laughs> winning and succeeding and being heard and being seen as they should be um naacp award do you want to talk about that for a sec yes that is wild okay so uh, i wrote I was the like, book what? i know me too i was like what and also um so i wrote the book thank you i wrote the book and flower love. i got an email yeah uh, the book's called Flower Love. So good. Out now. It's, it's so, I'm not even exaggerating. Okay, we'll get back to NAACP. Okay, in okay, that. yes. I ordered a few copies of this book. Okay. And I keep giving them away as gifts, so I have to keep buying more. Because they are, I, I just, well, well, I have a lot of creative friends, yes. right? And I have friends who are like, are interior enthusiasts. Yes. And it's just the perfect book. The story is beautiful, the way you write, the authenticity, the voice, and then, of course, to browse it. And then you also get tips. Yeah. It's all yes. tips. It's like yes. incredibly well done and it's beautiful and it's unusual because it's it's not just a coffee table book. It's like inspiring. Yes. But anyway, on to Thank why you're you. that's why you're winning an award. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, about the book, I, I want to talk about it more, but that was the whole point. You just literally nailed that was literally what my pitch was to the publisher. There you go. Was I was like, I want it to be a beautiful coffee table book. So if nobody reads a single word which i'm very guilty of yes i will buy a 200 dollars book yep. that's this big it's decor and yeah. i will look at the photos and not read a single word and i was like i want a book like that yeah that someone never reads a word i want them to be like this is fucking gorgeous yeah that was part one and then part two was i said but if someone does start to read it i want them to be so surprised yes. And so happy, and to so realize happy. that that this book is the companion that they didn't ask for, didn't want. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> I'm ask. so happy to have. We can't ask for it. No, yeah. it is, and and it's um, I've read a lot of these books because I love interior design books yeah. too, and I and I really do, and I appreciate all the different perspectives. But very often they're written from such a self-important place, mm -hmm. and so, and the spirit of giving in your book, yeah is what stood out to me at, and i mean the beauty of it and the originality of your design yeah. and your creativity also thank you but the do you know what i'm saying yeah. it was a giving book it was a book to give to inspire not to be like oh look at me i yeah uh, i mean yeah look at you also yeah look at me i did this but i did this because i love doing this <laughs> right yeah and i wanted to really demystify the floral design process when i was mm -hmm. entering this space, when I was in this space, I was so freaking lucky to yeah. be around powerful, beautiful, talented, courageous, selfless women. You are lucky. Who showed me what was yeah. up. And I shot them they out. Didn't Joanne gatekeep. Line. No! No, they didn't gatekeep. Mm -hmm. Joanne Lai, if you can find her, D-O-A-N-L-Y on Instagram. Okay, She's her. freaking amazing. Um, the, all of the women at Geometry Gardens in Brooklyn, in Williamsburg, yep. Brooklyn, incredible. All the women over at Poppies and Posies in New York City and in, it, like, upstate New York. This is where you started, to tell everyone, you started out here, out east. And then yes, you guys, started, you, when you want to have I, a family, yes, you were I like, started I as need an space. intern. Yeah. I started as an intern sweeping the floors at a flower shop in Brooklyn, well, which is now called- You were in grad Garden. school yep. at a giant, yes. amazing Ivy yeah. League. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was going to grad school. Someone did their research. Good well, for you. Someone does her research, but also I just am obsessed with you, so I just follow you. Oh my God, you. that is, that really like makes me so, <laughs> that makes me feel so, oh, oh that's the thing. Oh, what is that? Like me. We're all cyborgs, guys. We're all cyborgs. Wow. Wow. That was really cool. Um, yeah, so it was it was an amazing an time where I was able to learn. Yeah. yeah, and so I wanted to give, give that back. I did not want people to feel like um, I didn't so, want people to feel like they couldn't have that information. It's so 
interesting because this is what sets you apart to me among many other people. I, I love everyone. I really do love a lot of different vantage points. I don't think there's anything wrong with some people who are maybe yeah. a little more private, maybe a little more buttoned up. That's totally fine. Yeah. But what draws me to you is that that willingness to be completely open, completely giving. And I don't know about you. For me, I, I am that way as well. However, I do have tinges of jealousy. I have tinges of worry. I guess oh, yeah, we all do. Good. I'm yes. glad to hear you say it because the truth yeah. is, through that, I will always tell myself, if I have to worry that sharing this information is going to make someone better than me at something right. or get something I, I should get, then, right. then that's not a good reason. But that's right. not a good reason. We, we can all do our best and be amazing. I'm going to share as much as I can with yeah. people. Yeah, I think that is a great way to help to disrupt those sorts of thoughts that can pull you into a spiral because that's what I consider to be doom scrolling in my world yeah. when I'm on the apps and I'm like, swiping and I'm seeing all these floors and all these actors and all these people and all the and they're all doing this stuff and they're all they're working and I'm just I be doing baby that? poop. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> and I and I sit there and I really can get ups, upset with myself. And one thing that I tell other people and I try to tell myself, and this is one of the reasons why this book was so important for me, is it really is a conversation with myself. Mm. A lot of the cur um encouraging things that I say in the book to help the readers go on and keep going and keep pushing through the frustration. And I know that this is hard, but you can do it just a few more stems. Yes. All of that is stuff that I try to tell myself. Yes. It's like literally things that I'm trying to tell myself. So it's, it is true. How amazing, how much life lesson, how many life lessons are in that? Somebody, Alison Hopp says she loves that when you were talking about, not about sharing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a life lesson in your book too, so I read it, of course. <laughs> and I love, I love the part where you just go in there and talk about like times when you had to kind of make lemons out of lemonade, or times you thought you you were doing something really great and then you got knocked down a few notches, and you're like, oh wait, but I still have to show up and do the best I can. This isn't what I thought it was, but here's what I'm gonna do. I don't want to give away too much, but yeah, thank you for having no. the broadcast. I love it. Um, no, it's such a good book. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it was so honest and real at the same time as being aspirational, which is hard to do. Sometimes people are just like, look at me, look at this. You could maybe do this too, but not to say, you know, <laughs> it wasn't all peaches. Like I struggled and this is hard. I still and, struggle. Yeah. And I still struggle. And I think that's part of what we were talking about in terms of the not feeling Feeling like we have arrived anywhere. I think right. if you have a growth mindset mm -hmm. in a creative profession, you are going to live a much happier life. But that takes a lot of work yeah. because our mindsets, we want to just like do the work, get where we need to go and feel all the benefits, mm -hmm. right? But the truth is, is that we will never feel that way because there's always going to be something some extraneous factor coming in, trying to push you off of your game, trying to remind you that you ain't shit, trying to remind <laughs> yeah. you, you know, yeah. tell you that so-and-so is doing it better than you and bigger than you and is making more money. And there's always going to be something. So I think if we can switch our mindsets to a growth mindset where it's like, you know what? The things that I know, I know I know these yeah. things. And I know I'm freaking great at these things but there's still a lot more to learn. Absolutely. And I think that if I, I can do that for myself and help others do that for themselves, God, just imagine like how much less anxiety I know. we have. And also that helps people trust that they're where they're meant to be. If they're doing the work and they're trying hard and sometimes you just don't want to do the work and sometimes you have a week where you're yes. not going to do the work. Like I've all that stuff day. Like you, yeah. where you're supposed yeah. to be. Mm -hmm. You're supposed person. to be there and, and it's going to be and you're going to have the ups and the downs and you're going to be flat. Most of the time, this is what they don't talk about. Yeah. <clears throat> there's the ups, there's the downs, right? But no one ever talks about when we flat. The plateau. <clears throat> the plateauing, excuse me, the plateauing, yeah. the where you're not doing anything. Right. Where you're, and you have all these ideas. You have your notebook that you're writing down. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to make this piece of content, and I'm going to pitch this show. And yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And you don't do any of it. Right. You just fall into the routine of waking up, brushing your teeth, right. putting on whatever you find on the floor that's still clean and doesn't smell, yes. and getting your kids where they need to be. Exactly. Sometimes that is your life. That's it. Um,
Sometimes that's what you've got. And I mean, I think people also have misconceptions that when you're on TV, you're making tons and tons of money. I don't know about you. I, I was not. So, no. <laughs> so people Who do. They does do have, not I've pay. Had, I've had people like, well, can't you just donate this and that and the other? I'm like, I literally can't. I literally can't. I I'm wish so I could. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you said this. Yeah. Because first of all, the streaming networks. Right do not pay well no, no i think this is nothing pays honey anyway in the first few years anyway pay. until you know exactly so i'm gonna break. i'm gonna break it down for Ooh. you for for your, Ooh, for your audience. It. yeah i'm spilling I'll, the tea I'll join. so a, when you get a television contract <clears throat> on a streaming network i'm sure. gonna talk about streaming because that's what i sure. do sure sure streaming like big platform hbo um netflix, netflix yeah. hulu disney plus paramount plus peacock right but the really the big ones are hbo disney plus hulu netflix which is now max they yeah. which is now max right um they will put you on a contract for three years options yeah right they, they put you so your money that you're gonna get paid like what you make season one yeah if you get a season two it's only right. gonna go up like this right yeah. right it's very, it's, it's less than, uh, it's less than inflation. Yes, it's or, well, extremely, mar it's extremely marginal. Right. And they're already paying you very way little. less than what you'd make if you were on network yep. TV. Network TV being ABC, CBS, NBC. Well, maybe, right? but it way depends less. on what you're doing. I think even those people in those beginning years of the reality yeah. TV, it's, it's yes. really, they, it's paying your dues. I mean, yeah. Well, well, how much can you handle for you very know, little I don't money? think it's paying your dues. I don't think it's paying your dues. I think they are taking advantage. I think they are taking advantage because there is no union everybody, to protect them. No union, which is changing, I think. But also, everybody wants it. It's similar in theater. Yeah. I mean, you guys, we went through this similar thing in theater when we were non-union, and you have to really fight for every scrap. And you yeah. kind of, you know, people are like, you should be so grateful you're working. Right. It's a tricky thing in the creative industry. And right. this is a great thing you're bringing to like, this yeah. is a whole nother subject that I think we should do another show on. I'm gonna have you yes. back on for yes, to talk 100%. about that. It, Cause we can talk about this for so long. And it's Absolutely. really important because so yeah. many people are now, influencers are a whole different story because they get sponsorships, they get money in totally different ways. And even that's changing now right. because the right. algorithms and everything else. Yes. So we need to recognize this is a new industry with very little, um, it's an oversaturated. It's an oversaturated, and it was already an oversaturated right. industry. So I think we are a, an industry that is flush, flush with talent. Yeah, flush with talent, flush with great people and contributors, right. and people who are very um, able-bodied to wow. create these amazing spaces. And there are billions of dollars that are going into these networks yeah. that the talent is not seeing yeah yeah so it's gonna hopefully it's gonna change a little bit i will also say that this is the best endorsement that you just gave for people to just be themselves and do themselves and be authentic because things are changing so quickly do what you love spend the time you can on it yep. invest in yourself know that if you're doing quality work and you have a great personality and all these things are true right. about you the right things will land for you if you keep doing the work. right it doesn't mean you know i have to compare myself to you and you have to compare yourself to me and vice versa whatever right it's like Great to see. Oh, yeah, I'll take that opportunity. Oh, I met Noelle and she wants to introduce me to this person. Or I met Kristen and he yeah. wants to help me out there. Great. I'll take that opportunity. Yeah. All right. Shouldn't people just authentically be themselves and yeah. do the work? Well, that's the hard part. And I think that is where we as theater actors mm -hmm. had a leg up, right? Because when you are on stage yeah. in front of thousands yeah. of people, sometimes more, or sometimes yeah. less, sometimes tens of <laughs> people. Yeah. But when you are on stage and you are in that space where you really are vulnerable, mm -hmm. you have to be very comfortable with you. Mm -hmm. And that is something that you don't achieve, at least I didn't achieve that in yes. my 20s. Right. I didn't, I barely achieved that in my um, 30s. I <laughs> barely you're got- so, oh, What, you're, you're easily just 30. Don't even Thanks. talk to me, I'm older than you. Thank um, you. No, Thank and you're, but there's so much, there's so much achievement happening. And like you said, there's so much growth mindset. Yeah. Did we even talk about the NAACP award? What was it? Wait, okay. I want to make uh, sure we, 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 we sort of got like, sidetracked, but we can go back to Totally it. around it. We're coming back. Yeah. I, I need to hear about it. That's okay. It. 
So um, it was, I did not even know that it was a category. I didn't even know. That was the thing, because when you watch the live broadcast, they're only right. showing you the big fancy right. entertainment awards, but there's an entire creative arts yeah. wing of the awards that you just don't see. So the nomination came in and I was completely gooped and shocked and thrilled. And I feel like it's truly, probably the greatest uh, honor that I uh, could receive ever. And I say this coming from a place of real humility yeah. because I did not see me. I said this earlier. I never saw a black gay person on right. television right. other than RuPaul. And even when I yeah, saw that's... RuPaul, I remember RuPaul had a TV show in the 90s on VH1. Oh. It was like, yeah, it was like the RuPaul show. I want to say it was a VH1. I, think I didn't was. get cable I could be back wrong. in those days. I was in the <laughs> woods. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and she had this, they had this show, uh, and I only saw them, but that was it as a drag yeah. persona. Yeah. So the right? character. It was the character. So there was a character, there's a performance happening. And, you know, I had to sneak to watch that show. And then if and then my parents would come in the room, I'd change the channel real quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and because I knew that there was something taboo going on. Right. And so recognizing that the door that RuPaul and artists like Vincent, mm -hmm. and we didn't know at the time, artists like Lil Richard. Right. And all of these other artists have opened up for me for me to be able to feel comfortable in my skin and to be here sharing my story as an artist mm -hmm. um, does not go over my head. And, it hits me. And these are the people that this organization has recognized as being trailblazers. These are, I, don't know, well, I don't know if that's what's happened, but I do think that these are the people who have um, created space for me to enter the room. Right. They have knocked down doors for me to be able to enter the room. Mm -hmm. And there's a, this is a real full circle moment because as a little kid, I grew up in, as a black person. I grew up in the, in the black community. Mm -hmm. I grew up as a black person, but I never really felt comfortable, fully comfortable in my skin mm -hmm. because where I grew up, it was heavily tied to religion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was an mm -hmm. extremely religious environment. And as we know, <laughs> religion is the best freedom of expression all the time. Yes, yes. It's not the best freedom of expression and it's not the best for that. And so, like, I felt very, because my blackness was so tied to religion mm -hmm. and the church and that community, I felt very ostracized mm -hmm. by it. Mm -hmm. Which actually is what made me seek out theater because I was seeking yeah. other weirdos. Yes. I was seeking people who was, who were like me, people who yeah. um were okay just like going out and yeah. being yeah. crazy and loud. Yeah. And so now to be able to fully feel mm -hmm. the recognition and the love and the oneness with my people and to be honored and recognized in this way feels so um, major and so it is major. deep. And I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful because, you know, now you're, it's amazing. You're one of the many people being recognized yeah. as, a, as an important part of the Black experience and that it yeah. is way more than what traditionally has been accepted and, and, and also as, as children you see you see the world through as a very um i don't know like it's a hazy lens it's not a clear lens you know you grow up and you start to see things more clearly and one of the things that my parents really taught me which is why this award is so special is the importance of black excellence yeah. right my parents knew that their kids were going to grow up in a world that was going to ask them mm -hmm. to do more, yeah. to be more, to excel, just to be treated just to get level. basic. Yeah. Right. Just to be treated on a basic level. Correct. And 
for this award to be honoring black excellence and for them to say i'm part of that is like so true in every possible way just from the you know my watching your journey and for all of us watching your journey and it will continue to be that and you will continue this growth and it's going to be what it's going to be and it's going to be incredible and um i wish i had more time but guess what you're coming back if you want yeah okay because these are good i'm gonna I'm going to try to actually get these to be um, more recognizable. I'm putting them on YouTube. I'm trying to figure that whole thing out. Um, Cause these are it's great. It's so hard. You have to be mommy. You have to and be honestly, producer. You got to be everything. And you're, honestly, you're doing your best. I'm cool with not being a major influencer. I'm a micro influencer. And what that means is I'm just me and I love to share. So right. that's what we're doing. Um, yes. But I want to ask you my okay. little questions and then okay. I want to see your show and tell. Okay. okay. What is warming your heart these days? Oh God, that is a hard question because there's so, there's many, so things. many things. Um, what is standing out for you right now? Okay, what's standing out for me right now is the space, is the scary space, mm. is the space of entering new areas of entertainment, new areas of growth, new areas of um, artistry that is and and the space to be able to do that because that is scary sometimes you just want to stay in your lane oh my son is here hi Hi. son hi Hi. he's gonna try and come over that's okay i would love it i would literally love it you want to say hi that's fine hi he's he's not interested and that's what also happens sometimes it's like i want to be on top of you the other time Uh, yeah like like, no thanks (laughs) no Um, thanks that is incredible because what's warming your heart is the same thing that's scaring you because that's where you know that so much growth happens. I love exactly. that. And yeah. so what does home mean to you? Kids? Husband? Uh, what? Oh, uh, home means to me to be able to let down my walls. Mm. To be able to not have to and then fill in the blank. Yeah, I love that. That for me is... Within your walls, I, you let down your walls. Yes, yes. To, to let down your walls because I think when as people we just sort of operate the world with expectation. We operate the world with expectation. You go to the grocery store, you have expectations. Mm-hmm. You get in your car from the moment yeah. you get in your car, you have expectations. So the ability to just not have this, those expectations mm-hmm. of yourself or of anybody else, that is when I feel most at peace. Oh, that is that. that is home for me. Oh, I love- Love that. That's great. I'm still searching for that because I have a lot of expectations I, at home. Um, no, I'm working it's on hard. it. Uh, what creates a feeling of harmony? And you know better than ever all the harmonies, all the steps. What creates a feeling of harmony is when I feel like I'm operating on all cylinders, mm-hmm. which you know is rare. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which is but so, it's all fire. So right? rare. Yeah. It's it's they're all fi- firing, but I don't feel like they're all firing at once. Most right. of the time. So if I can get myself, you know, if my it day is like, yeah, it feels balanced. I've been able to work out. Yes. I've been able to take care of the kids. I can draw my eyebrows on. I have days like I that. Get out the house. Like if I feel like I'm operating on all yes. cylinders and everything's sort of like aligning, that for me is harmony. Yes. That'd be great. Oh, that'd be great. And sometimes it happens, but exactly. I know exactly what you mean. That's the feeling. Yeah. That's the feeling. I, I feel like most of the time I'm just. What's that? Oh my God, that's my mom. Mom. So proud of you for sharing your story. I learn more about you each time you do an interview. Oh my God, stop right now. I can't do this. I'm gonna cry. That is my mom. And you gotta shout out mom. My mom is so ride or die. My mom is so ride or die. She is, Pauline, she, you met her. I know, I remember now. Oh my God, they're so great. She looks like Shirley Ralph. She, <laughs> well, she was in Dream Girls. Yes, oh, she's gorgeous. Um, my mom Ralph? is so. My mom truly is. I probably would say like the greatest influence on my life because when it comes to how to carry yourself, how to speak with emotion, and speak in a way that people can really go on the journey with you. Right. All of that comes from. Uh, my mom. She's an educator. She is a survivor. She's a black woman living in America, which we know is enough. <laughs> is, is to be enough. A survivor. She yeah. raised three kids in Detroit during the rough years of Detroit. If you go to Detroit now, it's like shiny and new. I know exactly what raised, you mean. Yeah, like she raised three kids 
Beautiful who grew up children to be with beautiful working lives, adults. With yeah. beautiful influence. Yeah. Um, and again, all, all legacy. This is a legacy yeah. she's creating. And she's also in the book. She's oh, also yeah? in the book. If you yeah. uh, if you go to the orange section, because it's color, it's sort of color coded. Um, if you go to the orange section, there's she's the only human you see in the book holding an arrangement. Yeah. Uh, in, in the main section. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I love it so much. Do you have any show and tell, or is that your mom? Do you have a picture of your mom? What? <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a show and tell for us, like a kindergarten style? Oh, my gosh. Anything. I don't. OK, what's nope. behind you? This is, um, is that a oh, this is a great story. OK, there you go. This is, so a, moss, show and tell. This is a moss wall. So when that's I was doing great. weddings, when I was doing weddings in New York City, when I first started, I had a bride who said she wanted her escort card table to be a bed of moss. Yes. So I had to figure out how to do that. So I made a bed of a bed of moss on this like foam core board so that I could just go and transfer there. And after I was done, I was like, oh, I spent hours yes. on this. Yes. I spent hours. Throw it out. On Yes, I, I'm not going to throw this out. I'm not going to, I was like, I'm taking a piece of this home. And so I took it home and put that, this, I found, we found some pallets on the street, got out that nail gun. And it's <laughs> growing on the wood of the pallet? It's not growing. It's preserved moss. Okay, preserved. It's okay. preserved moss. So, so it's not alive. Yeah, you don't have to water it. But it's it looks preserved. fantastic. Thank you. There you go. So, inadvertent, not even on purpose, you had an excellent show and tell. Thanks. I love talking to you so much. I have to cut it off or I won't be able to edit it and put it on YouTube because I'm that um, grassroots over here. <laughs> okay? Grassroots. One I'm day that. I'll have a bigger campaign and then something will happen. But I love talking to you. I hope you can come again because we could talk. I will. I would love to really talk about the ins and outs of creatives on TV. I yeah. think that's interesting. So, yeah. I'd love to do that. Um, mwah! And I'll talk to you soon and I can't thank you enough. Bye. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. and go buy my book. Go to shop dash wildbloomfloral.com. Yes. Shop but dash what? Sorry. You go to shop dash wildbloomfloral.com. Wildbloomfloral.com. So that, that's yeah. your exact, that's the direct link. Yeah, you or get just it go to my page. Flower Love. It is yes. literally a beautiful book. Thank the, you. Everyone I've given it to as a gift, and I have to keep buying them and giving them, I told yes. you freaks out. I'm not exaggerating. They're like, this Yay! is so special and unique. I love this so much. This is the most special gift. I'm like, so bye. So anyway, Thank you. and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. bye.